what's going on guys welcome back to a week of game of thrones terror squad we are back in the house ready once more yesterday i dropped three videos hope you guys go and check those out i would highly appreciate it if you guys go and check those videos out um it's so far so good as we're going leading up to um the premiere of season eight of game of thrones um so good that you guys have shown um shown those videos some love hopefully um the rest of the game of thrones people that was watching my videos before hope they come back hope they know they didn't disappear on me there's certain people that that i haven't heard from in a long time some people are coming back say they didn't know i was reacting to rome and all of this other stuff so um, I'm just getting back around to what we used to do back, um, when I was doing the Game of Thrones reactions on the channel. And as I said, um, most of them, most people that, that, you know, I wasn't reacting to anything that they watched. So it's totally, totally understandable, you know, if they never tried any of the other shows, it's, it's no big deal, right? Um, so I'm glad to hear back from those people again, commenting on my videos and stuff like that. So I'm putting up Game of Thrones content again. Um, so welcome back to all you guys that, you know, you know, came back, commented on some of the videos um, from yesterday. That was really cool um, um, to see some of you guys back. Um, hope you guys understand why. You know, there's certain things that are going going down now on the channel, which is, um, I know they're probably not going to see this video, but I am going to address it on another video um, at another time. But right now, I want to jump into this reaction, man, to just keep this ball rolling because I still don't have a ton of time to react to stuff. It's just that I'm trying to cram a lot of the Game of Thrones stuff that I didn't get a chance to react to. I'm trying to react to them now. So... If you guys are seeing these videos and you want and and your suggestion was not reacted to, you can always put those links back down in, in the comment section again um, if you want to. I do have all of them saved, but just in case I missed it, that's all. So if you want to put it down in the comment section, I would highly appreciate that so just in case I you know, I might have skipped over it or I missed it or whatever the situation is. A lot of people have tell, have been telling me about um, a channel called Talking Thrones. I actually checked it out. Didn't watch any videos from it. Um, I didn't watch any videos from there because they, they're saying that this guy, is, his predictions are usually right. Okay, so I don't want to watch any of his season 8 content because he has a lot of season 8 prediction where he, he calls them endgame theories. Um, so... It's pretty dope, pretty dope um, channel. As far as I can see, I'm a, um, I haven't watched any of his videos yet, but I am going to be watching one tonight that talks about the relationship with Bran and Jamie going into season eight. I don't, we don't know if it's going to happen. I'm just taking a chance and watching one of his videos. Um, so we'll see how things go from there. But this video that I'm about to react to right now is called Euron Sucks um basically a book to show comparison just because a lot of people have said that Euron they have really downplayed his character in in the TV show so and he was vicious right he even heard that he had a a, a horn that can control dragons a dragon horn or something like that hopefully they talk about this um this video is actually from um ideas is it ideas of I've of ice and fire i think it is um yeah i think that's that's the name of that channel i'm pretty sure we've done videos from him before um so let's go check this out man let's go check this reaction out i'm excited to see this because you will, you guys already know that i'm even though i have not read the books i'm a i'm a fan i'm a fan of the stories from the book because some um some of them or most of them is so much different and so much more fleshed out but i don't hate the tv show because of it like some book lovers do i don't hate the tv show um 
mainly mainly because it's from two to me it's two different perspectives now you're getting content that's not in the books you know what i'm saying and i'm pretty sure that um jar george i'm pretty sure that george is going to do a pretty good job i don't know if it's a final book or is there going to be more books after the one that's everybody is waiting on right now i'm pretty sure that it's going to be one hell of a book hopefully um somebody has also suggest suggested to me over on the discord channel that for my patreon what i could do is actually do live readings um or do live readings when i when i start reading the game of thrones book that's a really good idea because it's some it's it's i don't i want to i don't want to say it's unique but if if you guys want me to do something where I'm reading the book and you guys can can um you guys want to support that and stuff like that, so let me guys let let me know what you guys think of that being something that you would want to support as Game of Thrones fans. It's something you want me to read through um read through the books um and how you would want me to do it. If you want me to just read it regularly um or or if you would want me to just like, like do it in a cinematic fashion, because I have, the, I, I can do that. If that's what you want me to do, you know what I'm saying? Being dramatic with it and all of this other stuff. If you want, how or if you just want me to read regularly, it's fine. I don't want to bore people to death, of course. Um, but if it's something you want somebody to read something, um, and you could come in and enjoy it, um, Cause for me, it's just like when I'm reading stuff, I've never, when I'm reading, I can read like that because I've read scripts like it. It's just like having a table read before, if you're going to do an acting job or something like that, like I can do that. Cause I've been in small productions before as in plays and stuff like that. So I know how to be dramatic. I'm not, the, I'm not a great actor or anything like that, but I do know how to be dramatic like anybody else right and read something and express yourself right so we're gonna jump into this Euron sucks book to show comparison let's get the headphones on let's jump into this man let's go to put it shortly Euron is one of the most evil terrifying and mysterious men in the entire A Song of Ice and Fire book series he spent years in exile, sailing the oceans. He's been to Valyria and lived to tell the tale. The real Valyria, not the crappy show version of Valyria with the stone men. The true Valyria, whose ruins wait in the center of the smoking sea. This place is so cursed that people won't even sail miles within it. Euron not only went there, but returned with artifacts. Valyrian steel armor, a magic horn that supposedly has the power to bind dragons to his will, and he has a ship called the Silence with black sails and a red hull and deck to hide the blood from all the messed up crap that he's doing. The ship is full of people that have all had their tongues cut out so they can't tell his secrets, and he's using all of this knowledge that he's gained in some huge plan that involves all of the strange dark magic. Euron, more than anything, I think, believes that he can become a god. He wants to be worshipped, and he's willing to do anything to accomplish this. Euron is a complete psychopath, and he's one of the most dangerous men on the face of the planet, pushing the Ironborn to return to their older, more brutal ways. In comparison, the show version of Euron is a total f boy. If there is an example of a worse book-to-show character adaptation than Euron Greyjoy, then I'm not aware. When Euron first shows up in the show, I wasn't immediately Damn. turned off. At that point in the timeline, book-to-show, everything was pretty much misaligned. So he shows up during a storm on the bridge and kills his brother Balon. He even has the line, I am the drowned god, which implies that he may be in fact a representation of his book counterpart. In the novels, Euron has been banished from the Iron Islands by Balon for the rape of his brother Victarion's wife. He only returns after Balon's death. In the novels, it is suggested in a prophecy by the Ghost of Highheart, another character with magical leanings that's cut from the show, that a faceless man was sent to kill Balon. I dreamt of a man without a face, waiting on a bridge that swayed and swung. On his shoulder perched a drowned crow with seaweed hanging from its wings. So, it's heavily implied that Euron has amassed a great amount of wealth 
in his travels and was able to hire a faceless man to kill his brother, which uh. honestly makes the most sense because in returning to the Iron Islands while Balon lived, he ran the risk of being recognized and having to face the consequences of that. Once Balon was dead, Euron could return to shake the balance of power. But I wasn't too upset with seeing Euron on the bridge. He didn't have the eye patch, but I thought they were at least respecting the spirit of the character for the most part. But it's all downhill from here. Oh, the king's moot. Fuck. Talk about <laughs> disappointment. The king's moot is such a grand epic scene in the books. All of the Ironborn gather on this one island amongst the bones of this giant long-dead sea creature named Naga who had been slain by the Grey King long ago. All of these potential rulers make their cases including Asha who is Yara in the show and Victarion who is omitted from the show. Then, suddenly, a terrible sound roars through the air. Euron is having one of his men sound the Dragon Binder. The Hellhorn from Lost Ancient Valyria, and it's like the most piercing, awful sound. Sharp as a sword thrust, the sound of a horn split the air. Bright and baneful was its voice, a shivering hot scream that This is what I'm this is what I'm talking about. Like if I would do just to, I'm sorry, I had to do this uh, but this is what I was talking about when I was in, in my intro when I was saying that if I was going to do the reading if you want if you would want me to read it like this like with some ominous sounds and you know being all dramatic like a cinematic experience instead of me just reading you get what I'm saying like just just reading it like this would be awesome if if you could do it like like I could do it like this with some sounds in the background and stuff like that just doing in an edited like reading it like this then editing it later you know what I'm saying like you know, like for dramatic stuff and stuff like that that's happened in the book. I can read it like that, okay? But you guys have gotta let me know. Alright? Made a man's bones seem to thrum within him. The cry lingered in the damp sea air. It was a terrible sound, a wail of pain and fury that seemed to burn the ears. Aaron damp hair covered his and prayed for the drowned god to raise a mighty wave and smash the horn to silence. Yet still the shriek went on and on. It is the horn of hell, he wanted to scream, though no man would have heard him. That guy that's blowing the horn collapses and dies. He literally cooks from the inside out because it's ancient Valyrian magic and no mortal man shall sound this horn and live. And Euron, being the charismatic guy that he is, convinces the Ironborn that they can return to their past glory and beyond. He says that they will have dragons because this horn can bind dragons to their will. So, I imagine if you haven't read the books, then you're probably like, what the heck? None of that happened. <laughs> know, right? So in the show, we get this scene in a sense, but it's scraped down to its bare bones and further. The diminished scale of this in the show compared to the book is the most jarring to the point where it's almost com okay we, we're not, we're really doing ads right now you serious youtube man get off my comical screen. to a book reader euron looked cool on the bridge during the storm at night but in the daylight he just looks like some guy not at all the vibe that you get in the book version then, there is also the part where he starts to speak. I'm going to Gadavan, ride over, and give it to Daenerys Targaryen, along with my big cock. Instead of menacing and mysterious, Euron comes across as an arrogant frat boy. It becomes quickly apparent in this scene that Euron is not representing the character in which George R. R. Martin envisioned. We, as readers should expect the showrunner to maintain a reasonable degree of loyalty in their portrayals. This show was initially sold as George R. R. Martin's story brought to the small screen, and that's what it was until they started progressively more and more taking liberties with characters. So not only does Euron's look totally fail to represent the book counterpart, but his personality is divergent as well. Personally, I would rather him represent the spirit of the character rather than the look, but in this case we get neither. From this point on, the Ironborn plot moves in a totally different direction 
than in the books. They are not even remotely similar. So why bother even contrasting them at the point? I'm just going to talk about the show. In the show, Yara and Theon steal most of the Iron Fleet, and Euron declares that he will build a thousand ships. My initial reaction is okay, but how? The Iron Islands are pretty barren, and there are very few trees. They would have to go and attack someone else's land in order to get wood for these ships. Something like this would spark a tremendous amount of conflict, especially when we're talking about a thousand ships. That's a lot of wood. Also, it takes time to build ships. In A Feast for Crows, Cersei is having several ships constructed, less than ten, and it takes months. But we see Euron next season, and he suddenly got all these ships. Where did he get the resources for this? And these ships are all fancy with elaborate prow designs and painted hulls and sails with huge sigils. How did he have the time to do this? It makes no sense. And there's no mention of how we're just expected to accept this. And this is also around the time that they start to slightly blend Euron with the character Victarion from the books. We get a scene where he attacks Yara's fleet and he's got an axe and he's like a maddened warrior. To me, this is more akin to something that Victarion would do in the novels. Euron is the type that lets others carry out his dirty work. Yes, he has committed atrocities on his own with his own hand, but mostly he would rather deploy others to do his bidding. Euron also in the show has a bunch of creepy interactions with Jamie in the show where they're talking about like sex stuff with Cersei. I don't get anything out of these weird scenes, but if you do, then cool, I guess. I just struggled to find anything interesting to say about Euron's character in the show. He's simply uninteresting. We've seen this type of guy before. This entire plot line, King's Moot onward is the embodiment of just mediocre storytelling and there's just not very much depth to the character Euron at all. Euron isn't the most annoying character, but the decline in depth from book to show is too jarring to ignore. What does Euron even want in the show? What are his motivations? To become king by marrying Cersei? Well, he's an idiot if he thinks that Cersei is actually going to marry him, so if that is his plan, then double fuck him. Because that will never work. If this was book Euron, in book Cersei, then maybe Euron and Cersei could marry, but these characters are in totally different places book to show, and what would make sense in one scenario wouldn't necessarily make sense in another. In conclusion, I wouldn't be totally shocked if they pull out something surprising with Euron, maybe have him getting the upper hand on Cersei in some way, but I just can't see it happening in a way which would be convincing, considering all that's happened so far. Mostly, I just feel disappointed about this character and what he could have been. The showrunners merely chose not to adapt Euron, and that's all there is to it. This guy is not Euron Greyjoy. He doesn't look like Euron Greyjoy. He doesn't talk like Euron Greyjoy. He's not even around the same characters that Euron Greyjoy is around. Damp Hair isn't a character. Victarion isn't a character. He doesn't have any of the things that he has in the book. He doesn't have his eye patch that covers up his blood eye, this mysterious blood eye that he has. His ship, the silence, isn't really the silence. It doesn't look like the silence. It doesn't have the mutes on it. So how can we call this guy Euron? This is not Euron. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, like and subscribe, and peace out. All right, um, my opinions on this. As I've said before, it's very, it, it's very hard for some people to accept the fact and to differentiate the TV show from the books when it comes on to this. Why? Because when you when whenever you read something and it's being adapted into whether it be from manga to anime or from books to TV show or books to movies there is this sense of authentic authenticity that you're anticipating so it's just like how um in in, in anime you expect if they're making a, 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 um, 
if they're making a um what do you call it like a a real life movie you get what i'm saying um they call it live action like a live action movie of a anime like the um the bleach movie that came out or you know what i'm saying um the atrocity of dragon ball evolution it's there's an expectancy so you want that authenticity you don't want you can make a, a completely different story say for instance a an off story but you want the characters to be authentic you want the characters to stay true to, to who you know them to be in book form in man in manga form um that's something that anime does very well when it comes on to the translation from manga to anime they do hit extremely well sometimes it's hit or miss sometimes it's hit or miss but it doesn't happen very often um i can understand because people they know about the game of thrones the 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 books the saga the history the lore the this the that the whatever we get it i understand why book readers would be upset now putting that aside and looking at the tv show as a story of its own you get what i'm saying with elements drawing a drawing um most of the history the lore from the books right when you look at it from that perspective it doesn't hurt as much um i've read books before that has been translated into movies um give you guys some examples um i'm a huge tom clancy fan right huge tom clancy fan um all the Jace, the 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 Jason Bourne stuff, right? I've read all that stuff that they've made video games from Tom Clancy stuff. Um, I've read the books, man, and those are brilliantly written books. You're talking, I, you're talking about Stephen King books that has been translated into movies. I've read them, right? And sometimes it's a miss. But do I look at it and be like, oh, they did a terrible job and cuss them out and be like, oh, they didn't honor the work and whatever. Listen, sometimes it's a hit or a miss. I remember Silent Hill, and that's a translation from video game to movie. Right? I remember watching the first Silent Hill movie. Which Silent Hill is like, I remember playing Silent Hill and Resident Evil was the horror game back in the day the games of of horror they they were they dominated right um i remember when they made the first silent hill movie and it was pretty dope right scary you get what i'm saying so um i could give you guys so many examples of fails when it, i remember doom doom one of the biggest first person shooters to ever come out. Remember when that movie dropped? That movie was trash. Okay? It didn't capture the elements. It didn't capture the elements of the video game. It didn't capture the atmosphere of it. It was trash. But guess what? I still enjoyed it for what it is. I still enjoyed it for what it is. Yes, something can be trash and you can enjoy it. And that's why I'm trying to say when it comes on to Game of Thrones, you just have to enjoy the tv show for what it is enjoy the story that they're trying to tell you in the tv show and stop comparing it to the book because if you do that then you're spoiling the experience for yourself that's all you're doing you're just spoiling the experience for yourself because if you look at it and say okay yes Euron was a total badass in the books so was one of my favorite characters that I went off on, um, Sir Barristan sell me. Like, they could have done more with it. Yes, I was, I was upset that they could have done more, but I still said, hey, 
I just have to enjoy Game of Thrones for what it is. I didn't like how they killed his character. Whether or not I got to see all the great things that he that he did in the books, he did not deserve to the to the history behind that character. And it's the same thing with Euron. Nobody wants to see this Euron, but that's the Euron that I know because I've never read the books. Right? I don't think he's a great character just from just from my perspective is funny you get what i'm saying just from my perspective from just watching the tv show you get what i'm saying like he's not that great of a character to me yes um i like the scene when he took out the the, the sand snakes like i, I love that capturing larry and all of that stuff all that stuff was 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 good those scenes were good right Time was moving fast. That's why he had the ships. I'm not going to worry about that. Time, the, the time skips in season, in season seven was absolutely ridiculous. But it was there. You had to deal with it, right? It was crazy time skips. One minute they were in Dragonstone. The next minute they're freaking in, 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 um, beyond the wall. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so there's a lot to divulge there when I say you guys just, I'm sorry to say this to you book readers, but you just have to take it on a different on a different case when it comes on to both of these things in comparison. You can't to me, yes, they use a lot of the lore. They're going to, they have to use the history and the lore to complete the seasons, to get the seasons done. They have to go based on the sto the storyline because now they've run out of material. They've ran out of books to write for. What was the decision to bring John back? It's got to be George's decision. He's an EP on it. He's okaying a lot of this stuff that you're complaining about too. You got to look at it from that perspective. He might not write the book to end like how the show is going to end at the end of season eight. It's a huge possibility that the, the story he's writing, that the book that y'all been waiting for for so long, it's not going to be the same thing. Right? So, what I would do, if I was a book reader now, I would look, look to see how they're going to do the spinoffs. Because the spinoffs are going to be stuff that has happened in the past before we had this Game of Thrones series. So look at how they do that, and then we can say, okay. Because it's not a continuance, it's a flashback that they're going to be doing in the next Game of Thrones series that they're going to do on HBO. So that's what I would really want to see, like how they handle that, because that is the history of Game of Thrones. Now that shit, you can't, you can't mess with that. Like, you can't mess with that because if you mess with that, then that's, you're just plain idiots. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You're just idiots because now you have, the history is fleshed out for you. There's no reason for you to go off course with the history of Game of Thrones, right? No reason. No reason. So, there you go, guys. That's me. Just letting you guys know, you know what I'm saying? Like, just just be easy. It's all good. You know what I mean? Final season of Game of Thrones. I'm hyped. I'm just excited to see this series. Um, that I got a chance to be alive and to see something so great on TV. You know what I'm saying? To go to the point where the budget for a TV show is, is ridiculously high. Like... You know, you guys don't understand, man. Like you're living in an historic time for for films and filmmaking and TV shows and all. It's history in the making. You don't know if you're ever going to see a TV show as successful as Game of Thrones ever again in your lifetime. You don't know that. That's why I'm saying just enjoy it for what it is and stop being sour, and being salty, and all of this other stuff. It doesn't make sense. It, that's what I'm saying. Like I'm all about positivity yes there are things that piss me off you know what i'm saying i'm not a tree hugger <laughs> you get what i'm saying stuff piss me off but i love positivity i like to look at things and break away the positive things from it instead of 
not just the negatives. You get what I'm saying? Yes, you can recognize recognize negativity, but you also got to always recognize the positive things, not only the negatives. Um, anybody can understand if you're upset about something. There's nothing wrong with that. That's emotions, right? That's emotions. So, and everybody has a right to their emotions. But at the end of the day, what I encourage you guys to do is just, just enjoy the TV show for what it is, man. That's, that's all it's about. Is just just enjoy it for what it is. At this point, there's no reason to complain about is book readers against TV show watchers. Like that's that shit is old. Like l- let's be real, you know what I mean. So, um, I'm pretty sure that when I when I start reading the books, I'm gonna enjoy the shit out of it. So, um, and I'm not gonna be comparing it to to the show. I might make references, you know, but. It is what it is. It is what it is. You know, so, yeah. So, if you guys have not subscribed yet, man, hit that subscribe button. Season 8, Episode 1 drops on Sunday. Um, I'm ready to go. My HBO Now um, account is ready to go. I'm ready, man. I'm ready. Hit that like button if you're as excited as I am. Leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Um, on my review on this, um, I would really love to hear you guys thoughts on this, even though a lot of people that are here have already kind of expressed themselves about this stuff. Like I would really love to hear you guys express yourself some more on this video. So leave a comment in the comment section, man. It's your boy. It's your boy. It's your boy. Therabyte reacts. Peace. See you guys in the next one.